Right, the weather is changing and the spring is surely on its way. It's now the end of February and the sun is just starting to poke through the mist in the morning as I take our little dog for a walk. But I thought I'd just do a very quick video because it struck me the other day whilst I was walking past this field here. You might be wondering what it is. And it's been in here since, uh, I don't know, for, since before Christmas. So it's just been sitting there. The reason why the farmer's not done anything to this crop is that the fields have been so wet and waterlogged and he can't get any tractors or machinery on it without that getting stuck. So this crop has just stayed there. Now I was thinking, well, what is this crop? What's he growing? And uh, what it is, it's sugar beet. And I've always thought, well, what's the difference between sugar beet and things like swede and turnips? And why do people grow sugar beet uh, to begin with? So I thought I'd make a quick video out of it. So here we have a sugar beet. They're quite big things really. And they're quite distinctive in that they are teardropped in shape, red at the bottom and where it's been exposed to the, um, you know, above the ground, exposed to the sunshine and things, it's a little bit paler. But uh, as you can see, it's probably about 30 centimeters in length, but its distinctive characteristic is that it's tear shaped. And if we cut into this, it would be um, a white flesh. And as the name suggests, I'm guessing it's quite sugary, but we'll find out. <laughs> So that's about uh, 15 acres of sugar beets done all in the space of a few hours. And uh, can you imagine what it was like back in the day when all of this had to be done by hand with the right machinery? It doesn't take very long at all. And so tomorrow, that's the other field to be done. And that's going to be probably another 10 acres or there or thereabouts. I'm not quite sure how many tons they got off this field or how many animals it's going to feed, but it looked quite a bit. As you can imagine, sugar beet, which is quite high in sugar and, and energy, takes quite a lot out of the ground. So you've got to put stuff back into it for stuff to grow in the future. So this field's going to be covered in uh, manure and muck and all sorts of stuff just to get energy and, and goodness back into the ground again.
because sugar beets contain so much energy, as well as things like maize, they also have another role, and that is to produce energy. These go into um, digesters, which basically produce gas or methane uh, that ran, then runs turbines to produce electricity. Um, these particular ones in these fields don't do that, but you know some people do. But these ones are definitely going for the cattle market. So all we've done here is just chopped up our sugar beet, our little few samples of uh, sugar beet that we got the other day, and uh, I'm now going to give them to the sheep, and this will be the real proof of the pudding to see whether the sheep actually like them. I think they do. I'm doing it a little bit round the corner because if they see me coming, they're just going to make a, a dash for it, I think. But anyway, let's see how it goes. Right then, they're just behind me. I'm just going to uh, rattle it a bit, and I'm sure they're going to just come running. Yeah, I think that was a success. I think they like it. Well, I think the sheep like the sugar beet anyway, at least. Anyway, I think that's probably about it for this video. If you've liked it, then hit that subscribe button, the like and the notification bell and everything, and you'll get updates and everything else that we do on our small holding here. But anyway, until the next video, bye for now.